So, hier ist ein Video zur ganzen Geschichte mit Joey Carbstrong, warum er nicht mehr auf der Vegans to Follow Liste bei mir steht, wo ich die einzigen Veganer verlinkt habe, die ich empfehlen kann. Und Raffaella hatte mich auf Twitch angesprochen und deswegen habe ich da ein bisschen geteasert und mache hier jetzt das Video, wo ich das dann erkläre oder so gesagt besser erklären lasse von Vegan Gains. Und wir haben alle die Debatte miterlebt, wo Joey Carbstrong mit mit Tristan Tate debattiert hat und uns ist allen aufgefallen, dass da irgendwas nicht stimmte in der Debatte, right? Irgendwas war da faul. Uh, wir kennen Joey Carbstrong, der ist in den Straßendebatten, wenn du seine Videos guckst, ist er absolut super Debater. Und hier in, dem, in der Debatte, wo der irgendwie auf der Seite von, von sich, weiß ich gar nicht mehr, kann ich mich nicht erinnern, wie viele Zuschauer der hatte, vielleicht 1000 oder sowas, unter Andrew Tate, unter Tristan Tate, er hatte da, soweit ich weiß, mich erinnern kann, 60.000 Live-Zuschauer. Also war wohl die größte Geschichte von Joey Carbstrong. Und wir haben alle gesehen, dass das eine extrem seltsame Debatte war. Joey Carbstrong war wie ausgewechselt. Der war unfähig zu pressen. Der hat verlernt, wie man debattiert. Und von daher habe ich mich auch damals gefragt, was da passiert ist. Da muss ja irgendwas passiert sein. Da muss irgendwas hinter den Kulissen passiert sein, dass der so wie ausgetauscht ist, ne? nicht mehr wieder zu erkennen. Von daher hier dann eine kleine Aufklärung dazu. Also jetzt habe ich auch verstanden, nachdem ich das von Vegan Gains gehört habe, ihr könnt euch gar nicht vorstellen, wie das, das ist schon fast unheimlich, diese Geschichte, wie ich dazu gekommen bin, wie ich auf das Video gestoßen bin. Ich habe beim Fahrradfahren auf meinem Handy einfach äh, Vegan Gains eingegeben und dann habe ich nach neuestem Video sortieren lassen und dann habe ich da ein Video gefunden, wo sein ganzer Livestream aufgezeichnet ist. Die, seine ganzen Livestreams werden ja aufgezeichnet. Und da habe ich auf einen Livestream geklickt, auf irgendeinen Random draufgeklickt und die gehen ja vier bis acht Stunden. Und dann habe ich dort irgendwo reingeklickt, einfach ins Video und <lacht> bin genau an der Stelle rausgekommen, wo äh, Vegan Gains angefangen hat äh, mit einem Caller. Also jemand, der in Discord angerufen hat, über Joey Carbstrong zu sprechen und habe so die Story mitbekommen. Da dachte ich so, what the fuck, was für ein Zufall. Also wie kriegt man sowas? Ne? Was ein wirklich, wirklich seltsamer Zufall. Und äh, so habe ich erst diese Story erfahren. Und ich werde euch, äh, nachdem ich äh, diesen Ausschnitt hier gleich euch hier vorspielen werde, werde ich hinten dran noch diese Story äh, von Joey Carbstrong dranhängen, die, jo die äh, Vegan Gains schon vor Jahren mal gemacht hat. Ja, das ist ja, knüpft er ja an diese ganze Gesch Geschichte an und erklärt es ja einfach in Depth. Von daher ähm, werde ich das auch noch hinten dran hängen. Aber dass äh, diese Erklärung, die Vegan Gains dort gibt, äh, erklärt, warum hier Joey Carbstrong wie ausgetauscht war, ne, dann versteht man das. Und von daher ist eine ziemlich bittere Geschichte, vor allem auch was Animals for the Voiceless angeht, also AV, eine super Organisation. Und äh, man hat einfach gemerkt in der Debatte, dass irgendwas nicht, nicht mit ihm stimmte. Ne? Jeder hat es bemerkt. Ich hatte das bemerkt. Ich habe darauf reagiert live. Ne? Ich, ich habe vorher nicht da reingeguckt. Ich habe da live äh, darauf reagiert. Das ist ein drei stunden video geworden von mir. Und irgendwo hier, irgendwo in diesem Teil äh, ist mir dann aufgefallen, so, hä, was ist mit dem? Ne? Ich habe das ein paar Mal im Stream gesagt und dann dachte ich mir, hä, warum widerlegt er dir nicht? Warum Da, da werden Trades genannt. Wie, warum widerlegst du die nicht? Ja, dann habe ich irgendwann gesagt, hey, sag mal, was ist mit dir? Du bist wie eine kleine Maus, die irgendwie in der, in der Ecke steht. Du kannst auf einmal Trades nicht mehr widerlegen. Ja, aber auf der Straße Top-Debater, äh, auch sonst in Debatten Top-Debater, auch wenn er es online macht und hier auf einmal komplett unfähig. So, ne, als wäre wär irgendwas im Busch gewesen, right? Und es, es war tatsächlich was im Busch. Ich werde euch das gleich abspielen. Und äh, das ist einfach, das ist wie, als würdet ihr von mir eine Debatte gucken. Ich äh, mache eine Debatte gegen irgendeinen äh, großen Typen, gegen äh, Montana Black. Ne? Und ihr wisst, wie ich debattiere. Ne? Ich mache stumpfes NTT-Pressing. Ne? Also ich teste ich, das, was ich mache in Debatten. Wenn ich das nicht mache, äh, bin ich ausgetauscht, stimmt irgendwas nicht. Ich mache immer mit NTT, teste ich auf Special Pleading. Das, was, das, was, das ist das, was ich mache, right? Und wenn ihr irgendwie, ich debattiere mit Montana Black und äh, äh, tausende Zuschauer schauen zu und dann äh, auf einmal sagt der Montana Black, naja, man darf äh, Milchkühe ausbeuten, weil ich bin ja Vegetarier, äh, weil die irgendwie nicht so intelligent sind wie Menschen. Und dann sage ich, ah, ach so, ach, das ist, das ist die Eigenschaft, ah, okay, naja, okay, hm. und, und äh, wirst du irgendwann vegan? Na, dann würdet ihr auch merken, so, äh, what, Eugen? Kannst du, kannst du den debattieren? Kannst du den widerlegen? What the fuck? Hä? 
Das kenne ich ja gar nicht von dir, du bist ja wie ausgetauscht. Right? Da kann man sich vorstellen vielleicht, dass da irgendwas im Busch ist, right? Von daher hier, ähm, ohne weiter hier jetzt äh, rum zu erzählen, hier einfach die Erklärung dazu. Joey Carbstrong. We can agree that he did terrible in his debate with uh, Tristan Tate, of did course. You? Yeah. Like extremely terrible. But I don't think it's cool to just, I, I mean, of course it's you and, you know, no one's going to take it completely seriously. But telling him to I don't think that's uh, 100%. That's not too cool. Yeah, there's a reason why um, I'd say something like that, and it's because I just have absolutely no faith in the guy. Um, I, I'm fine with him doing animal activism. Like, there are people that I, I just genuinely don't like who do animal activism, and I'm not going to try to get in the way of them doing activism, but I will call them out on their bullshit. With Joey, there's clearly a pattern of behavior where he's primarily interested in making money, and his route of making money is through animal activism. And again, I'm, I'm usually fine with that as long as the animals are being helped I don't really care if somebody is just doing it for their own personal benefit, so long as animals are being benefited too. With him, um, he first did that bullshit with Anonymous for the Voiceless, where, sure, they would have gotten defunded anyway, um, but he got involved to a point where he even tried to convince, like, you, you know, just their... their their normal supporters, that they're pocketing money. Like, they rely on donations. Um, the reason their org got so big was because they were getting, um, you know, supported by this really rich guy. I think he was donating, like, $2 million a year to them. So that was their biggest funding source, and I don't know how much more money they're getting from, you, you know, people who are just fans of theirs. Um, I, I'd imagine, you know, it's a good chunk of change, maybe in the tens of thousands. He was trying, like, Joey was trying to convince people that they were just pocketing money so that they can live this, like, luxurious lifestyle. Um, when that clearly wasn't the case, he was deliberately lying because he is got there, pressured oh, from sorry, that guy. I want to interrupt. Is there proof that he was doing that? Like, or is that just, like, speculation, like, you know, from... That wasn't speculation. He made several videos, several Instagram and Facebook posts about it. Um, he even made a video on his YouTube channel saying that. Okay. And, and it's clear why. He was he it, he gets paid by that same rich guy. Um, I would imagine he's making somewhere in the neighborhood of five to ten thousand a month uh, from that rich guy. Uh, off of so that's a big source of income for him. Uh, so he got pressured by this rich guy to slander anonymous for the voiceless like so he's gone out of his way to harm other animal activists just so that he can make money that's fucked up and then on top of that like what really like just broke it for me uh i just lost complete and utter respect for him was that tristan tate debate so to begin with it's like morally questionable whether or not you should even D jasmine can you like be quiet it's hard to concentrate so it's Don't morally the queen sorry yeah Don't yeah. Yell at the queen yeah, yeah so it's um morally questionable to begin with uh for him to debate tristan tate because the guy is uh, like literally being charged with human trafficking um so that's one thing on top of that okay, like, whatever, maybe you've, you know, weighed out the morality of validating a guy who is probably in all likelihood a human trafficker with doing vegan activism and speaking to their audience, trying to convince them to go vegan. Fine, whatever. I'll, I'll look past that. He didn't debate Tristan Tate. Like, I, I've seen Joey's street debates. He's not the best debater, but he's pretty competent. 
Um, he's better than most vegans at debating just because of the amount of experience he's had and, and you know, just the knowledge he's accumulated on these topics. He didn't debate De and he deliberately didn't debate. And it's clear why he had an interest in going on Tristan Tate's like podcast or whatever. It's so that he could gain more fans hoping Oh, Tristan Tate's fans, if I, like, agree with everything uh, Tristan Tate says, don't debate him and just try to chat him up, maybe they'll be like, oh, Joey's a cool guy, I'll check out his content. So he went on there with the intention not to do animal activism, but to, again, promote himself so he can make more money. And then after that fucking travesty, where he is debating one of the dumbest motherfuckers you could possibly debate. It would have been his easiest fucking debate ever to just make Tristan Tate look like a fucking moron. He starts posting clips of that on his fucking channel. Like, like posting shorts of that debate to, again, yeah, I think get more attention, more traction. Too. When that, like, if I did so poorly in a debate, I would not fucking repost clips. And, like, again, it's clear that he's reposting clips of him being a fucking <laughs> making animal activists look like incompetent fucking morons so that he can get attention and money. So, like, I'm at a point where I really don't care if the guy <laughs> and I, I genuinely believe, like, if this guy's going to be such a fucking embarrassment, yeah, he should. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't know he, there was actual proof that he was being a dick about the anonymous for the voiceless thing. I wouldn't say per se personally, but I mean, I guess I see where you're coming from on that. Yeah. And he did kind of, he was kind of a cuck at the end there, kind of jerked him off talking about, can you share my stuff out, please, just a little bit? Yeah. He was like, uh, no, nah, I'm good, dude. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. It was some bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, so that's where I'm coming from. Hi everyone, so today is going to be a very unfunny and serious video. Some of you may even think this is boring, but it's a video that I definitely have to make. I don't like criticizing other vegans or vegan activists, but in this case, Joey Carbstrong definitely has to be held accountable for what he did. He helped to get Anonymous for the Voiceless, a very well-known animal activist organization, defunded. Now, the founders of this organization, AV, Anonymous for the Voiceless, Paul and Assal, they made a very long video breaking down all the details on what happened with Joey Carbstrong, how he helped to get their organization defunded. Now, I'm going to play you a very abridged, uh, edited down version of their video. Joey said to us, look, the donor has come to me and said he wants me to financially audit Anonymous for the Voiceless. Right. And I was saying, wait a second, Joey, can you tell us where this is coming from? Where exactly is the evidence that we aren't to be trusted financially? What is the accusation? Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you. That Joey wasn't just innocent in this. Like, he fully owned this as a reasonable request in his mind. Right. He thought yeah. that it was reasonable yeah. to be appointed as our financial auditor. auditor and there was some comments that he were he was making that, that made I it very we later obvious. realized you realized more sooner than I did that he had already placed value judgments into this scenario yes saying things like oh that's a lot of money that you're getting from the don't like oh, oh you're yeah. in a very privileged position to right. be receiving this amount of money as if that entire budget is going right into my pocket so let's communicate with the donor directly instead of talking through Joey Carbstrong. So we went back to the donor and the donor said, I don't want any part of this anymore. You have to deal with Joey Carbstrong. Yeah. Shafted us. Dismissed us. Okay. And then what we decided, what we seem to find um, reasonable as a reasonable solution, solution was we will get a uh, accountant involved here. We even said not our regular accounting No, a third firm. party. Yeah. A third party accountant yeah. who will provide a financial report. And he thought that that sounded reasonable. Yeah, Initially, he said, okay, I think that's the best thing. Yeah. So he then went back to the donor to tell the donor that we said this on the call and yes. that 
you know, this seemed like the most reasonable solution. On the third call, Joey comes back to us. I'm on the call. You're not. Mm -hmm. Comes back to us and says, that's not good enough. What I need from you is your bank login. Your username. For your, your internet password, login. For your bank so I can access all of AV's banking information. You can't just share your bank account login with people. What we later or pointed out. Or your credit out, card number with what, people. What we later pointed out is that not only is this an unethical request, it's actually it's actually illegal. It's illegal. And it's extremely unprofessional. Now, again, Joey had not only doubled but tripled down on this mm -hmm. at this point that this is the best solution, that this is the most appropriate way to manage a... Uh, a or need for financial transparency yeah. with us. And of course, Paul and Asal denied this ridiculous and highly illegal request to give Joey Carbstrong their bank account logins and passwords. And as a result, uh, the donor pulled out. He won't fund Anonymous for the Voiceless anymore, so their funding is massively uh, cut back. And Joey Carbstrong is at least partly responsible for this. He's a He played a big role in all of this happening. And Joey, I have to ask, why would you get involved in this whole situation in the first place? Uh, for those of you who don't know, Joey actually receives funding from the same donor, and it's quite clear that he was pressured by this donor to get involved in this whole situation. But Joey, when someone asks you to financially audit someone else, when you have absolutely no accounting skills, no degrees in any of this, why would you agree to it? Like, no offense, dude, but I wouldn't trust you to give me correct change at a convenience store. So the idea that you think it was appropriate for you to financially audit Anonymous for the Voiceless uh, is just insane and delusional. And on top of that, you supported all of this bullcrap. You never stood up for AV and told anyone, this is wrong, this is stupid, we shouldn't be doing this. Some of these things are illegal like asking for bank account logins and passwords. No, not only were you complacent in everything, but you supported all of these decisions. You doubled down and said, yeah, this is reasonable, asking for illegal information, bank account logins and passwords, and you helped to defend, uh, defund Anonymous for the Voiceless. And Joey uh, only proves this further in a, a stupid Facebook and Instagram post he made, and he came up with a, a bunch of slimy, disgusting, weaselly lies that we're going to debunk right now. So Joey starts off by saying, the following is a statement in response to the recent situation with Anonymous for the Voiceless, AV. Firstly, I want to address the claim made by Paul and Asal, AV, that I sent out to cancel AV. This accusation is damaging and untrue. I've collaborated and promoted AV across my channels from day one. I've had an AV link in my YouTube channel for years, and I had a segment on AV outreach in nearly all of my speeches encouraging activists to join. Yeah, so Joey, this is just a complete load of bullcrap, and I'd even say you're lying. Nothing you just said had anything to do with what happened between you, AV, the donor. You're just trying to manipulate people into thinking, oh no, Joey Carbstrong supports AV. There's no way he played a role in getting them defunded when, no, Joey, it's quite clear that you did in fact help get them defunded. Uh, not only did you get involved in the situation in the first place when you had no business in doing so, but on top of that, you supported all of these attacks against AV. You supported this idea that they are untrustworthy, they're spending their money frivolously, just on themselves, pocketing the money, and you even went along with these stupid ideas like trying to trick them into giving away their bank account logins and passwords, even though that's illegal, and you, you made this post to support and double down on all of the stupid crap. Later in your post, you even accuse AV of being dishonest, untrustworthy, you even called them rude, obnoxious people. Like, a like Joey, you call this supporting AV? You're a goddamn liar. What happened was a major donor had concerns with AV and the relationship between this donor and Paul Nassau was breaking down. This came to a head after AV published a controversial Black Lives Matter protest post, which upset many people and resulted in a number of complaints to AV's donor. This was compounded by other concerns, including AV groups not receiving funding from Paul and Asal. So again, Joey, you're supporting this idea that Paul and Asal are just 
pocketing this donation money for their own benefit, even though you have absolutely no evidence for this claim. They even agreed to have a third party professional financial audit done, which you failed to mention, and they even addressed this accusation in their original video. So one of the claims that people were making against us from the emails that this donor was receiving was that with the IV fund, anyone who doesn't know what the IV fund is, we dedicated a huge amount of money per year to support our chapters. So we would send money to roughly about 20 chapters per month before this coronavirus thing started. And um, we had different tiers. People just needed to be eligible to apply for it. If they were, they would receive it. We would send them the money and that's it. And that money would help them buy equipment or whatever they needed. So this has been going on for over a year now. Mm -hmm. We had the AV fund in place. So this person, the donor was saying, these people are claiming that they used to be an AV organizer. They never received the AV fund. And they are saying nobody ever received the AV fund. It was just becoming about how AV takes all the money and even the budget for the AV fund and doesn't help chapters, which is bull. And we do have proof for this. So one thing that the donor brought up was how much are you sending to the chapters? And we're like, this much? Mm -hmm. All up? Yeah. This much per year? And they said, oh, that's nothing compared to your budget. Sure, because we're an international organization. We've got 30 people working for AV, including ourselves. And yeah. we've got all these other costs. We've got a huge campaigns we're working on. And you agreed to, bud to the budget for each one of those campaigns. Yes. Right? So now, why are you going back on your own words all of a sudden? Like, you just signed the, the contract, like, without even looking at it. That's what it seemed like. So, Joey, they've already addressed these accusations. You're well aware of this, yet you're still perpetuating these lies in your stupid Facebook and Instagram post. They have a specific budget for sending out money to their separate chapters. Only certain chapters qualify for that money, and they can prove that that money in their budget is getting sent out to the chapters that qualify. Again, you're leaving out the fact that they were totally willing to do a third-party financial audit for you, and you're just coming up with this lie, where's the money go? Oh, it must be going right into their pocket. You're a goddamn liar, Joey. Why the hell are you doing this? After much consideration, the donor reached out to me to help try to resolve the matter. As a friend of the donor, I was asked to be in Involved because I had no ill feelings towards AV and in fact had been a longtime friend and supporter of their work. Furthermore, I have experience and understanding with grassroots activism on the ground. The goal is to help AV continue to receive their funding and work with them in fulfilling the donor's request for financial transparency. Although I was a little taken back by this request to get involved, I assumed that as a nonprofit organization, they would be open, honest, and compliant to regain the trust of the donor. Yeah, so Joey, this is just more complete bullshit and you are lying by omission. Why aren't you admitting that Paul and Asal were willing to give you a third-party financial audit? Um, you left that out of this paragraph for some reason. Gee, it's almost as if you are a lying, slimy turd who's trying to, you know, give everyone this idea that, yeah, Paul and Asal are lying. They're trying to hide something. They're pocketing all this donation money. Joey, where's the evidence? Why won't you admit what's actually going on? Why are you completely full of so I'm just going to skip over this paragraph here. It's just unimportant. The main financial concerns included the breakdown in salary costs, 946000 a year. The AV fund, 360000 which a number of AV groups said they hadn't received. We've already covered this. Paul Nassal already addressed this accusation. But for some reason, Joey keeps bringing this up as if it hasn't already been addressed. The high cost of developing an app, 150000 Australian, and a large touring campaign budget. 300,000 in a year when travel was restricted due to COVID. They also never readjusted the travel budget to suit the current situation of all travel being restricted. Okay, so Paul and Asal addressed all of these accusations in a follow-up response. Uh, most of this just comes down to Joey being an ignorant moron, not understanding how expensive certain things are, how expensive it is to have employees, develop apps, things like that. And as we've just seen, Joey is even repeating things that have already been disproved, these lies and accusations that they're just pocketing the money, but for some reason, Joey just keeps perpetuating these lies. Um, so I do want to cover the one accusation that they didn't adjust their uh, travel expenses for the year. Uh, again, I'll, I'll just play the clip. So the next thing Joey mentioned was the touring campaign uh, budget. He mentioned 300,000 a year. 
in a year when travel was restricted because of COVID. They also never readjusted this travel budget to suit the current situation of all travel being restricted. So yes, the budget that we asked for was 300,000 for an entire year of four and five. So it was going to be between four and five people traveling full time for a whole year. And that was based on the fact that we were going to take off in February or March this year. Obviously, this was affected by COVID. And the reason why it wasn't readjusted was because we thought nobody knew how this is going to turn out. Nobody had any idea how long this is going to take. I mean, it's been exactly what, like over six months now, and it might continue until the end of the year, but nobody knew. Even next year. Nobody knew this. So we thought, oh, it's going to take maybe another month or two, and then we're going to come out of the lockdown and we can start traveling. Yeah, so, we kept making plans to return to the tour yeah. every other week. We're like, right, we're going back on tour this time. Yeah, at this so time. we thought, we we were even thinking, we're, where are we going to be for International Cube Day, which is in November, but it seems like We don't even know if we're going to be able to do cubes here in Melbourne. So nobody knew because it's a unique situation. And that's why we didn't reach out to the donor to readjust the budget. We thought if the donor is happy to continue to send us what we agreed on, obviously that's going to be put aside for when we are able to start traveling and touring again. So Joey, if you or the donor were concerned, like what's going to happen to this, you know, travel budget, You could have asked, why did you make a Facebook and Instagram post suggesting that they're literally just pocketing $300,000 of this donation money that was intended for travel? Why would you assume that? Where's the evidence that they're just pocketing all of this money? They offered to give you a third party financial audit, which again, you're not mentioning in this stupid post and you're giving people the idea that they're literally pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars you are a weasel why are you doing the slimy disgusting shit? operationally there were also concerns with the Saul being the only treasurer and her handling of all the funds and payroll for the founder to have sole responsibility of these functions and an organization of the of the size and income it did raise concerns and is not best practice for demonstrating strong financial controls In most charities, there is an independent board of trustees who oversee the organization's operations and financial stability. This is not the case with AV and where there is a lack of financial accountability and all funds are received and distributed by Paul and Asal as they see fit with no oversight by anyone else in the organization. So again, Joey is trying to spread this idea that Paul and Asal are untrustworthy. Yeah, they're probably just pocketing the money, even though he has absolutely no evidence of this. And again, he's leaving out the fact that they were perfectly willing to have a third party financial audit. Weird how you keep leaving that important detail out of all these paragraphs, Joey. Uh, But anyway, Paul and Asal made a response to this. Again, I'll just play the clip. There is a lack of financial accountability and all funds are received and distributed by Paul and Asal as they see fit with no oversight by anyone else in the organization. There's various points. There's a lot to unpack there. So let's start from the beginning. Yeah. So first of all, he suddenly says in this statement, there were concerns about me being the only treasurer. That this was is never the first time. Yeah, that was never mentioned. Second of all, why? What's the issue with Asal specifically? Who else is more trustworthy, more professional, more organized? Have you done any research into what you're talking about, Joey? I know you didn't even write that, by the way. What exactly is the issue since you're now claiming these words are your own? Because I'm I'm saying you didn't write that. I know you didn't write that. But we have to assume he did and that he's, a, he's still accountable for those words. So I want to hear an explanation for why Asal is not the person to be our treasurer. Also, this notion that Asal is dealing with the money by herself is completely insane when she deals with, she works very closely with bookkeepers and a team of accountants. So all the financial affairs are managed by Asal and those people, not just Asal. Also, again, who exactly is more trustworthy, more professional, more organized, more suited to be in that position than Asal? Someone who started the organization, who would never try to fuck over the organization. Apparently, and the last point 
that was mentioned, we're supposed to have a board of directors, a board, trustees. he says. A board of trustees is something that you have set up with a different structure than we do. If you were paying attention at all to how AV was structured from the beginning, you'd know that Asal and I have been running AV and we do have it structured this way. We don't have a board. And this is why I know that you didn't say this. Because Matthew and the others were pushing for a board. And the fact that you can't see what that means is so fucking crazy to me. It's obvious that the board is designed to push me and Asal out of the way things are operated within AV. In other words, they're trying to control AV. They're trying to take over the way that we do things and run it differently. So this is what you're supporting, Joey. The notion that we should have a board which would completely make us intersectional, welfareist, and focusing on absolute nonsense compared to what we do now, which is holding people accountable for why they stab animals to death with no reason, targeting the demand. It would no longer be that. The screens would show different stuff. There wouldn't be graphic imagery. We would have food served at our events. Is that what you're behind, Joey? So again, Joey, you're just promoting absolute bullshit lies. There's a reason why they structure the organization the way they do, and you have not provided any evidence that they cannot be trusted. Again, you're neglecting to mention that they offered to give you a third-party financial audit, and you're just ask, acting like, oh yeah, they're secretive, they're hiding things, they're pocketing the money, they can't be trusted. You're full of shit, Joey. After back and forth deliberation with AV and the donor, Paul and Asal refused to give the type of transparency the donor was requesting. So if anything in this entire document proves you're a lying weasel, it's this. Notice how Joey isn't admitting that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords. Instead, he said, Paul and Asal weren't willing to give us the transparency that was needed. They weren't being transparent and honest. Uh, no, Joey, they were being perfectly transparent and honest with you. You're the one being a lying weasel and, again, lying by omission, trying to paint this as if, oh, Paul and Asal are just trying to hide things because they're just pocketing the money. Uh, no, Joey, they just don't want to give you their bank account logins and passwords because that's stupid, dangerous, and illegal, you lying weasel. We had the support of a professional accountant, so I wouldn't have been on my own, as has been suggested. The fact that Paul and Asal claimed they wouldn't give the donor access access to their charity accounts because they had their personal accounts linked with them is strange and after consulting with a professional is extremely out of the ordinary. So this is just more bullshit. Uh, so first of all, Joey's saying that there was an accountant involved that would have helped him. Why were you involved in the situation at all? It still doesn't make any sense. And again, you're still neglecting to mention that Paul and Asal offered to have a third party audit done. You keep admitting that to paint this picture that they're dishonest and they're trying to hide things. And secondly, you mention, like, again, you still don't mention that you're asking for their bank account logins and passwords. So now you're saying the donor just wanted access to their charity account. You're not admitting that you were asking for their bank account logins and passwords, which is illegal. So again, you're just being completely dishonest here. And I don't know how you think online banking works, Joey. For a single login, you have access to all of your banking accounts. I have a checking account, a savings account, a credit, uh, a credit card and a line of credit. I have access to all of those accounts on a single login. And if I added other accounts, like a business account, I would also have access to that account on a single login. What is, like, are you stupid? What, what professional did you talk to who said this is highly unusual? This is how online banking works, you moron. So again, I'm gonna skip this paragraph because he basically makes the same arguments in this paragraph. They also claimed to me in one of our calls that although they might have needed the donor at the beginning, they don't necessarily need them anymore and they could go on without them. This didn't make any sense as they as they had so many staff, they uh, say they have 30 and no reserve funds, yet they would rather let go of their main source of funding instead of giving the donor the transparency they were looking for. So notice again, he won't admit that they were asking for bank account logins and passwords. He's just saying they weren't being transparent and honest, very dishonest way of painting things. Uh, this did raise alarm bells with me as it seemed they would rather lose 1.5 million USD a year than comply with the donor's request, essentially defunding the whole AV. And he won't actually admit what the donor's request is. Again, he's just lying. So notice how Joey keeps doing this. He won't admit that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords, and instead he keeps going on about transparency. Paul and Asal aren't transparent. They weren't being transparent. They weren't giving us the transparency that we needed. When no, they were being perfectly transparent. It's just that they weren't stupid enough to give you their bank account login 
logins and passwords. And it's funny how Joey is being so hypocritical here, talking about transparency when, dude, you had your Patreon hidden for the longest time. You were hiding how much money you were making on Patreon until Paul and, Paul and Assal exposed you. But don't come at us like we're lacking transparency here when your Patreon doesn't even show how much money you receive. Right. You've got that blocked. And yet we're expected to give over our bank login. And then after he got exposed for this hypocrisy, Joey finally decided to show how much he's earning on Patreon. It's funny how you keep lying about Paul and Asal claiming they're untrustworthy and they're trying to hide things, but you've been the only one trying to hide things here, Joey. This money the donor gives is for the animals and if they're not 100% confident in where the funding is going and they have the right to stop funding, as does anyone, the donor, has never defined an organization like this before, so the circumstances were unique. AV were reluctant to take suggestions from the donor, showed arrogance, and spoke with contempt towards almost all involved. I agree with that, Joey, that yes, if the donor doesn't feel comfortable with donating to a particular organization, he doesn't have to, he can do whatever he wants with the money. The issue here is that you're lying. You are spreading lies about Paul and Assal and AV that are incredibly damaging not only to the organization, but Paul and Assal personally. You are provably completely full of also, for them to compare my Patreon, my YouTube, and rather modest amounts I receive from my donor to help with a few staff, two full-time staff, and some occasional freelancers, and travel when needed, to an organization with a 2.2 million Australian dollar uh, per year income. They actually weren't making that much money per year, that was just the expected budget for this year. Is nowhere near comparable and extremely misleading on their part as a public charity with one major donor. It should not come as a surprise to be expected to provide this kind of transparency. If you refuse and your funding is cut by the donor, I'm sorry, but that's not my fault. This is getting really tiring, so Joey is just repeating this exact same lie instead of admitting that he was asking for their bank account logins and passwords. Again, he's just saying, oh, well, they weren't being transparent. This sort of transparency is expected. Well, Joey, if this sort of transparency is expected, giving somebody their bank account login and password, Give it to me. Give me your bank account login and password. I want to see how much money you make off of YouTube, how much money you make off of Patreon, how much money you make off your donor, uh, t-shirt sales. Uh, I know you have a PayPal. So give me your bank account login and password. I'll look through all of your accounts. I'll see where all of your money is going, how you spend it, how much is going to you personally, how much is being spent on business related expenses. This sort of transparency is expected. Well, then give it to me, dude. Paul and Asal have made some incredibly damaging claims about my intentions when I I was just trying to help them when no one else would. Okay, so for all of you watching, uh, tell me, do you think Joey was being helpful here? Do you think Joey was being helpful when he was completely complacent in the situation, uh, not helping to defend AV or Paul and Assal? Uh, was he being helpful when he was supporting all these lies and misinformation being spread about them, uh, supporting the donor and his ridiculous demands to see their bank account login and passwords? Uh, do you think he's being helpful here by making this post where he's spreading more lies and misinformation, a lot of which he knows is untrue? Is that being helpful? And what really puts the cherry on top, which really makes me know for sure that Joey is being a slimeball piece of sh is that at the end of this document he said, this will be my final statement on the matter as I need to focus my efforts on the animals. Joey, you just don't want to take accountability. You don't want to take accountability for helping to defund AV and for spreading these lies and misinformation about Paul and Assal. And look, I've tried to reach out to Joey and try to get this, uh, you know, thing resolved between him and Paul and Assal. I wanted to set up a live discussion between Joey and them and uh, have me moderate. But Joey declined, and I think that's for obvious reasons. He doesn't want to take accountability for what he did, for spreading lies and misinformation, for not only being complacent in all of this, but supporting all of these attacks against Paul and Assal and helping to get them defunded. This sort of behavior is absolutely pathetic. I'm super disappointed in Joey. I hope in the future he grows up, grows some balls, and just admits that he does something wrong and apologizes, or at the very least, Defend himself in a live discussion. Clearly, this is a very important issue. One of the largest animal rights organizations has gotten massively defunded, and Joey's saying, oh, I have to focus on helping the animals. Were you helping the animals in this situation, Joey? So, this is ridiculous. Uh, Joey, either own up to what you did, apologize, or come on a live stream with Paul and Asal and I. We'll work out our differences and try to get this sorted out, but this is just you running away, not taking accountability for what you did.